Thank you, Katie. We're ready. So, if you have your Bibles, it will turn to Genesis chapter 27. We're going to look at some uh, amazing things here tonight. Um, and we'll start with a word of prayer. Father God, we're thankful for uh, another chance to come into your home and, uh, and grateful that we've got the Word of God right in our laps, in our hands, on our phones, however it is, but uh, we get to read what you have written uh, through your prophet Moses, and I pray tonight that your Holy Spirit would uh, speak to us, give us uh, uh, wisdom and understanding open our eyes to see things that perhaps we've uh, never seen or considered before, that we might be uh, enthralled, inspired, encouraged, and, uh, and moved to serve you better in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we talked last week, we were talking about this uh, uh, stolen blessing, and um, uh, we're going to go back because there, there's so much, there's so much there. We talked about the fact that Rebecca was uh, gifted, and that she could take goat and make it f taste like venison. Not everybody can do that. Most people uh, struggle to take venison and make it taste like beef. But <laughs> a lot of people, uh, she so she was good. But the the thing is. Um, had it. Yeah. So we're going to read this here. Um, let's pick it up. Um, in verse 5, because we know what we're talking about. So we'll go to verse 5. And, uh, and we'll go from there. You got it, Norm? Yep, 27 verses 5 uh, through um, read 5 through 10. Now Rebekah was listening as Isaac spoke to his son Esau. When Esau left for the open country to hunt game and bring it back, Rebekah said to her son, Jacob, look, I overheard your father say to your brother Esau, bring me some game and prepare for some tasty, prepare me some tasty food to eat so that I may give you my blessing in the presence of the Lord before I die. Now my son, listen carefully and, I, and do what I tell you. Go out to the oh, fields <laughs> or flock and bring me two choice young goats so I can prepare some tasty food for your father just the way he likes it. Then take it to your father to eat so that he may give you his blessing before he dies. And Sally, would you read verses 11 through 17? Mm -hmm. Jacob said to Rebecca, his mother, but my brother Esau is a hairy man while I have smooth skin. What if my father touches me and I would appear to be tricking him and would bring down a curse on myself rather than a blessing? His mother said to him, my son, let the curse fall on me. Just do what I say, go and get them for me. So he went and got them and brought them to his mother and she prepared some tasty food, just the way his father liked it. Then Rebecca took the, clothes, the best clothes of Esau, her older son, which she had in the house, and put them on her younger son, Jacob. She also covered his hands and the smooth part of his neck with the goat skins. Then she handed to her son, Jacob, the tasty food and the bread that she had made. Her, her solution to um, uh, Esau's hairiness was what? Goat skins. Hard to believe that that would work. 
isn't it? Unless she had somehow uh, I mean she'd had to fasten them on in such a way that when he touched in, in, and I'm guessing that uh, that Jacob uh, stayed away from his dad as much as he could. Her solution for let me let me rephrase that. In, in um, verse 15, what is she trying to accomplish here? She's trying to make Jacob look as much like Esau as possible. Not only look like him, but we're going to see in a minute. Um, besides a, a visual, um, what do clothes hold? Smell. Scholars think that this garment, uh, the best garments, uh, were a part of um, the fact that he was the oldest, that it might have represented um, uh, something more uh, in terms of having to do with being the firstborn. And if that's the case, uh, the fact that he wore them on uh, occasions that had nothing to do with a, a spiritual type ceremony would uh, go along with this idea that Esau really didn't take his birthright um, seriously. He, he, it wasn't something that he, that he honored. So, He's got the skins, he's got the uniform, he's got the, mon uh, the food. And, um, and let's pick it up. Did you like to read, Nicholas? Or not? Oh, I love it. Yes, just give it a whirl. Um, Well, let's have Nick Nick read it, and then I'll have you read a smaller portion, because she reads a lot. So, so read 18 through 29. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow, that's right. <laughs> when he came to his father, he said, My father. And he answered, Here I am. Who are you, my son? Jacob replied to his father, I am Esau, your firstborn. I have done as you told me. Please sit up and eat some of my game so that you may bless me. But Isaac said to his son, How did you ever find it so quickly, my son? He replied, Because the Lord your God made it happen for me. Then Isaac said to Jacob, Please come closer so I can touch you, my son. Are you really my son Esau? <coughs> so Jacob came closer to his father Isaac. When he touched him, he said, The voice is the voice of Jacob, but the hands are the hands of Esau. He did not recognize him because his hands were hairy like those of his brother Esau, so he blessed him. Again he asked, Are you really my son Esau? And he replied, I am. Then he, then he said, Bring it closer to me and let me eat some of my son's game so that I can bless you. Jacob brought it closer to him and he ate. He brought him wine and he drank. Then his father Isaac said to him, Please come closer and kiss me, my son. So he came closer and kissed him. When Isaac smelled his clothes, he blessed him and said, Ah, the smell of my son is like the smell of a field that the Lord has blessed. May God give to you from the dew of the sky and from the richness of the land an abundance of grain and new wine. May people serve you and nations bow and worship to you. Be master over your relatives. May your mother's sons bow and worship to you. Those who curse you will be cursed and those who bless you will be blessed the only part of this blessing that sounds familiar that God gave to Isaac and God gave to Abraham is where because this is not the blessing that we should be expecting Isaac to give to the firstborn the only part that sounds familiar is where which verse Yes, and, yeah, 29, very good. Because, um, he, 
he's missing the part about all the nations of the earth will be blessed. You know, it's just this less part about curse those who curse you, bless those who bless you. So the boy shows up, and the Holy Spirit is just a magnificent writer. And if you were listening to this because Moses is reading this to the children of Israel before they cross into the promised land. You know, night after night they would assemble and Moses would read this to the Israelites so they'd have an idea of where they came from. And I, I, not every night, but the nights that he was going to read from this, it must have been just something that most of those Israelites coming out of Egypt would have just been thrilled to sit and listen to their heritage. So they're listening to this for the very first time. And if you were listening to this for your very first time, knowing what's happened ahead of time, they get to verse 18, and what are you thinking? Thinking Jacob is not a very nice boy in doing the things he should be doing. And, he should and, be the cursed one, not the blessed one. <laughs> Except for the fact that God has anointed him to be the blessed one. So, so Jacob is doing his part in getting the blessing that God prophesied but from a, from a pure uh, uh, entertainment thing, as you're listening to the story of your ancestors, um, 17 and 18, what, what feeling does that give you, listening to it, this story? Is it going to work? Wow, it's, gonna, it's starting. It's right here. He's, he's there. Is this going to work? And the first thing that makes us say, uh-oh, is he says, who are you? What do you mean? Who am I? I'm Esau. And he says, I'm Esau, I've done what you told me, so get up, let's eat, so you can get me the blessing. He, he's, he's hustling him along. You know, when, uh, in, in, especially in football, you see this. If there is a question about the outcome of a play, teams try to hustle and get to the line and get the ball snapped so that they can't overturn the call. He's hustling his dad. Come on, I've got it. Eat. But his dad said in verse 20, what? How <laughs> did you get it so quick? How is it that you got this so fast? I mean, did you have it tied up someplace? And in verse 20, Jacob's response, and it's significant here because we're talking about uh, someone that believes in God and someone who doesn't. Jacob believes in God. Esau doesn't. He's an irreligious uh, a self-centered, worldly boy. So in verse 20, how does Jacob respond that would make his dad think it was Jacob? I mean, was Esau. He, he says something very... And, and how does he phrase that? Who, who's your God? See, Esau would never say, my God. He would say, your God. Because he doesn't buy this whole thing. He said, 
the Lord your God gave me success. So Isaac says, uh, all right. Now what do you think is happening in verse 21? What do you think is happening in verse 21? I think Isaac is wondering if this really is his son. Yes. But wouldn't he know by the voice also? Oh, well, we're going to get to that. Okay. <laughs> we're going to get to that. He, he's, he's not sure. And the first thing that made him wonder was what? how quickly he got the meal. I, I, you probably do too. Gil's probably one of them. It, it amazes me how on opening day, some guys can just walk out to the woods, look at their watch, says, oh, 7 o'clock, pull up your gun and shoot it. They're done. You know what I'm talking about, Gil? Do you know what I'm talking about? That's what I'm, ta that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> See. <laughs> yeah. See, Gil, he'd be. He would be one of those. And Isaac would say, man, Gil, how did you get it so quick? Because for most people, it takes a while. And, and so it's making him think, how did he get this so fast? And then, verse 21, that just cracks me up. Because he knows what about Jacob? What does he know? Yeah, he's not hairy at all. He's not hairy at all. And Esau, I mean, you could shave his back. <laughs> Make a sweater. <laughs> he was so hairy. So he says, come here, let me, let me touch you. So Jacob came close. Now, Isaac's old. His eyes aren't the best. And when we get old, for most people, what happens to our hearing? What? Say? What? <laughs> what? Yeah. yeah. One more time. <laughs> and... and uh, And this is Isaac. He, he, he can hear, but he can't hear well. And so now that Jacob is close enough for him to touch him, it, it, it sounds like Jacob. It, it, the voice doesn't match up. And then he says to verse 24, tell me the truth. Are you really my son Esau? Yes. So he eats, drinks, And his father's still not convinced. Verse 26. Come here, let me kiss you. And when he did, he smelled those garments. And he said, it's got to be him. Because you smell just like Esau. And so he gives him the blessing. Now, you're listening for this for the first time as an audience. And you're thinking... Come on, come on, come on. Why is it important 
to get this blessing out of the way and Jacob to get off stage. Why is that so important? Esau is coming. He's coming. Don't forget, there's, there's another player in this drama. And Esau is going as fast as he can to get there. Okay. Um, so Nicholas versus, oh, sorry, 30 through 38. I can't make them smaller for you. 30 through 38. As soon as Isaac had finished blessing Jacob, and almost before Jacob had felt his father, Esau returned from the hut. Esau prepared a delicious meal and brought it to his father. Then he sat up, then he said, Sit up, my father, and eat my wild game, so you can give it, so you can give me your blessing. But Isaac asked him, Who are you? Esau replied, it is, it is your son, your firstborn, son Esau. Isaac began to tremble uncontrollably and said, Then who just served me, served me wild game? I have already eaten it, and I, blessed, and I blessed him just before he came. And yes, that blessing must, that must stand. So Esau heard his father's words. He, he let out a loud and bitter cry. Oh, my father, what about me? Bless me too, he begged. But Isaac said, your brother was here, and he tricked me, and he was, and he has taken your blessing. Esau exclaimed, no wonder his name is Jacob, for now he has created, he has cheated me twice. First he took my rights as the firstborn, and now he has stolen my blessing. Oh, haven't you, haven't you saved even one blessing for me? Isaac said to Esau, I have made Jacob your master, and have declared that all his brothers will be his servants. I have guaranteed him an obedience of grain and wine. What is left for me to give to you, my son? Certainly. He soon pleaded, but no. But do you have only one blessing? Oh, my father, bless me too. Then he broke, Esau broke down and wept. Yes. Jacob just gets, gets out of the room. Just gets out of the room. Esau comes in. Gets it all ready. And he says, hey, Dad, sit up and eat. And Isaac's first question is, who are you? Who, who, who are you? I'm Esau. You know, the one you sent out to do a job? I've done it. Here it is. Well, how could that be? You know, when we get older, we get confused easier, right? I mean, it's not hard. And, and if you're being tricked, it's no wonder he's confused. And in verse 33, <coughs> how would you describe Isaac? Could be, could be that he was upset. Mm -hmm. Furious. Confused? Now think, you're thinking of uh, your, for us, it'd be, we're thinking about our parents. We have a gal here that's been coming for a long, long time. And, and, uh, and now she comes because of um, uh, Susan Sanick. Um, her name is Nanette Brecker. 
And um, the first uh, five times she came to church after this happened, her first words to me were always the same because she's uh, losing her faculties. The first words out of her mouth, the first five times after this happened was, they took my car keys away. I can't drive. And if you could see her face, do you remember, if you ever have done this, do you remember the first time you took your parents' keys away from them and told them they couldn't drive anymore? <sighs> that look is, I mean, you just don't forget it. Uh, Jeannie and I were headed on vacation when my, uh, when my mom called and asked if I would drive to Vesterberg to pick her up to take her to the hospital because my two sisters, one lived in the house, wouldn't do it. They said, uh, uh, Mom is uh, uh, hypochondriac. She's not sick, um, so we're not taking her. So she called me, and I drove over, and the problem was my dad wasn't able to be by himself. Did I tell you that I have a sister that lived in the house, and that I had a sister that lived a quarter of a mile away? So my mom said, we've got to, we've got to find a way uh, to get your dad into the hospital so that they will admit him to a nursing home because while you're gone on vacation, uh, he can't be by himself. My sister lives in the house, <laughs> a quarter of a mile away. So I got her admitted into the hospital, and um, from which she never came home. We were on vacation three weeks, and when we got back, um, we went up to the hospital, and um, she died in that hospital. Uh, her uh, illness was so severe. And my sister said she's not sick. It's all in her head. And uh, so I went back home, and I got my dad, put him in my truck, and we were headed back to Elma to the hospital. And... Um, He, he was born in that house and raised in that house for 83 years of his life. And on the way to the hospital, he looked at me and said, uh, you're never bringing me back home, are you? And that look is what I see in Isaac. Something awful has happened. And I've made a huge mistake. And Esau is just beside himself. Because there only was one blessing. You gave the blessing to the firstborn. But Esau is a, is a liar when he said... He took away my birthright. Esau sold his birthright for a bowl of pottage. And, of course, that's part of God's prophecy. So, he gives him a, a blessing. And... Um, uh, Kim, would you read uh, 39 through 46? Kim, Kim, Kim. 46. 39 through 46. Then Isaac, his father, answered and said to him, Behold, away from the fertility of the earth shall be your dwelling, and away from the dew of the heaven from above. 
By your sword you shall live, and your brother you shall serve. But it shall come about when you become restless, that you will break his yoke from your neck. So Esau bore a grudge against Jacob because of the blessing with which his father had blessed him. And Esau said to himself, The days of mourning for my father are near, then I will kill my brother Jacob. Now, when the words of her elder son Esau were reported to Rebekah, she sent and called her younger son Jacob and said to him, Behold, your brother Esau is consoling himself concerning you by planning to kill you. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice and arise, flee to Haran, Haran to my brother Laban. Stay with him a few days until your brother's fury subsides, until your brother's anger against you subsides, and he forgets what you did to him. Then I will send and get you from there. Why should I be bereaved of you both in one day? Rebekah said to Isaac, I am tired of living because of the daughters of Heth. If Jacob takes a wife from the daughters of Heth, like these, from the daughters of the land, what good will my life be to me? The only glimmer of hope in verse 40 from the words of Isaac is that eventually this, uh, this curse, this uh, dominion that uh, uh, Jacob has over Esau um, will be done. You're going to break that yoke. Now, We, we read how this all played out. And if there was any um, problems in um, Isaac and Rebecca's marriage, you think <laughs> it's gotten worse. And when she says earlier, remember he said, Mom, I, I, I'm not... I'm not built like Esau at all, and Dad's going to find out, and then I'm going to be cursed, not blessed. What did Rebecca tell her boy? Put the curse on your own. The curse will be on me. And wow, she had no idea. None. Because what does she think, um, verses 44 and 45, what is the plan in her mind. We're just going to kind of blow over in a few days. Yeah. Go over, wait till things cool down, and then come back. Now, what's so special about Jacob in terms of Rebecca? Rebecca? He was her favorite. He was her favorite. If Esau left, she could deal with that. But Jacob was her favorite. She has no idea, but when she sends him away, she will never see him again. Ever. Never, ever see him again. You think she thought that? You think she had any idea that that's what would happen? No. She thought it was going to blow over. What should Rebecca have done when she first heard Isaac making this plan? What should she have done? Not what she did. We all agree with that. What should she have done? Let history take its course. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, in, in, in history is taking its course. But... Uh, well, Isaac was wrong. Because God had already prophesied through Isaac's dad, by the way, Abraham, two nations were in her womb. 
the younger would overrule the elder. God had already said that. So Isaac was wrong. What should Rebecca have done? Come on, take it to him and let him give us the answer. Absolutely. She should have, she should have said, Isaac, you were there when God spoke. You know what God's will is. You know what God said. And you are not following God. Then, if Isaac, because things were different then, if Isaac would have said to Rebecca, silence, woman, don't ever talk to me again, then Rebecca should have gone back to God and said, I, I've got to give this to you because I can't do anything. Rather than, nah, I'm not worried about it, I'm going to do something. We do that all the time. Yeah, we take it. And then uh, oftentimes we'll say, uh, well, this must be God's will because it's working out. And if she thought this was God's will because it was working out, there must have been days that came in the future where she just bawled her eyes out because she missed that boy so bad. Yeah. Sin never is a good idea. Never is a good idea. Now, the reason I said it's slightly important is because I figure if God wanted Jacob to be the one that got the blessing, whether whether he Esau got it or not, eventually Jacob was going to get the blessing anyways. Mm -hmm. So that's what I meant. And and that's the exact right answer. Because if she would have confronted Isaac and he would have said, "Be quiet, woman." And then she had gone to God. Even when Isaac was doing the wrong thing, God would have made sure that Jacob was put where he was supposed to be put. But boy, that takes a lot of faith. Because we're thinking, boy, this is, this is really difficult. I think God's going to need some help here. Didn't think it was going to happen. It's the exact same thing. So let's go in there. <laughs> and Sarah says, you know what? It's not happening. Take Hagar. And as soon as he did, he, she said, what did you do? <laughs> what were you thinking? Uh, well, honey, I think that was your... I, don't play it on me, buddy. Just go sleep in the tent. Um, okay. Price to pay. How rich and powerful was Abraham? Very. Very good answer. Very rich. Very powerful. In, in comparison with Abraham, where was Isaac on the scale? Above or below Abraham? Above, remember? He became more powerful. In fact, the Philistines said, Wow, you, <laughs> you make your dad look like a pauper. You are something else. Abraham gave all his away. He had a lot of kids. Keturah, seven kids there, gave a lot away. But he gave a ton to Isaac. Isaac didn't need it because God blessed him so richly. He amassed a, a wealth that everybody in the area understood. It was enormous. How many kids did Isaac have? Two. Isaac gave Jacob the blessing. How much of that wealth and power he take with him when Rebecca sent him away? Zip. Zip. 
da. <laughs> Rebecca, Rebecca, Rebecca. Yeah, yeah, you, you fooled him. And, and he gave the blessing. But Esau stayed right there and inherited all that material wealth. He was powerful. He was powerful. Now, we get down to verse 46. Rebecca's got something else in mind. Always thinking. That girl is always thinking. And, um, and she's smooth. <laughs> Before we go on, though, I want, I want you to realize that in this entire scenario, never once do we read even a hint that God was angry with Rebecca or Jacob. Never once does he mention that. So, turn over, in fact, turn over to Hebrews 12, because I, I, I want you to understand that in this story, um, Esau might seem like he's the victim, but he's not. Jacob might seem like he's the villain, but he's not. Hebrews chapter 12, uh, verses 16 In 17. Pat, do you have that? Would you read that, please? 16 and 17. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness spring up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Lest thou be any fornicator or profane person, as Esau who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. Yes. Esau cried a lot, but he never repented. There's a big difference between crying and repenting. Esau was a profane immoral person sold his birthright for a bowl of soup and then even at the end he did not repent he just wailed whined about it so Rebecca needs to, Jacob to get out of town because Esau wants to kill him simple death coming run so she comes up with this, and what is her method for sending Jacob away? How does she get this played out? She comes to her husband, and what does she say? What does she say, Brian? Uh, there's no girls here good enough for him. <laughs> I don't want him marrying any of these girls. Man, they smoke, they drink, they chew. They're, they're just not good girls. They play pool, they go to the bowling alley, they do all the kinds of things we don't believe in. If he marries one of these Hittites, oh, my life is, is worthless. Tim, chapter 28, verses 1 through 9. So Isaac called for Jacob and blessed him and said to him, Don't marry one of these Canaanite girls. Instead, Go at once to Padan Aram, to the house of your grandfather, Bethuel, 
and marry one of your cousins, your Uncle Laban's daughters. God Almighty bless you and give you many children. May you become a great nation of many tribes. May God pass on to you and to your descendants the mighty blessings promised to Abraham. May you own his, this land where you are now, foreigners, as God has given it to Abraham. So Isaac sent Jacob away, and he went to Padam Aram to visit his uncle Laban, his mother's brother, the son of Bethuel, the Armenian. Esau realized that his father despised the local girls and that his father and mother had sent Jacob to Padan Aram and his father's blessings to get a wife from there and that they had strictly warned him against marrying a Canaanite girl and that Jacob had agreed and had left for Padan Aram. So Esau went to his uncle Ishmael's family and married two additional wives from there besides the wives he already had. One of these new wives was Math however you pronounce that, the sister of <laughs> Nebaioth, the daughter of Ishmael, Abraham's son. <laughs> a couple of things interesting happen here. All of a sudden, by verse 46 of 27, Isaac said, well, you're right. I'm a knucklehead. And we know that he's come to a different conclusion because when he gets down to 28 verses 3 through 4, how does that blessing change? What does he start, what does he mention? What does he bring up? And, and, and what does he what does he say? Verse four, special. God Almighty bless you and give you many children. And may you become a great nation and many tribes. After who? Abraham. Yeah. In fact, this Just land, like this land here, Jacob, this land is going to be yours. It was promised to Abraham. Now that's funny, because he's sending them away. You're going to have this land? Only you're not going to have it. But you're going to have it. That's how those Hebrews talked. It was just always in riddles. So he sends them away 500 miles. Haran, where these guys live, 500 miles from where they're at now. And Esau, he also sees the light. <laughs> he says, wow, my folks really hate these girls. <laughs> I wondered why they treated my wives so bad. They really don't like my wives. Because they told Jacob, I don't want you marrying anybody like your brother married. I want you to go way away and marry somebody good. So Esau says, forget these two, I'm marrying two more. They're not going to be Canaanites. <laughs> They're going to be Ishmaelites. So Jacob is going to end up marrying um, Rebekah's niece and Esau is going to end up marrying Isaac's niece. But one's from the Ishmael. The other one is from Bethuel, Abraham's brother. Esau, you don't get it. Ishmael also was rejected by God. So, why do you suppose he sends them all the way to Padanaram? There's something there that we don't ever consider, but it's, it's in Scripture. Turn over to Joshua chapter 24. This is so cool. Joshua chapter 24.
Lori, you ready to read? Okay, verses 2 and 3 of Joshua 24. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, From ancient times your father lived beyond the river, namely Terah, the father of Abraham and the father of Naor, and they served other gods. Then I took your father Abraham from beyond, beyond the river and led him through to the land of Canaan and multiplied his descendants and gave him Isaac. We often assume that Abraham was a pagan because of what Joshua says here. He worshipped other gods. What we don't take into consideration is that one of the other gods that Abraham worshipped was the god. He was just polytheistic. He worshipped a lot of gods, including Jehovah. And the reason I say that is, go back to Genesis chapter 31. Because by the time we get this to this in a month, you won't remember it. Genesis chapter 31. Lori, read verse 53. The God of Abraham and the God of Nahor, the God of their father, judge between us. So Jacob swore by the fear of his father Isaac. This is in the process of, of, of Jacob and, and Laban. And Laban said to his nephew Jacob, the God of Abraham and the God of Nahor. So Nahor was Abraham's brother. And it is pretty... We're, we're, we know that in Genesis chapter 12, that's when Abraham's converted. Because God speaks to him, Jehovah God. So he's converted. And it seems like uh, Genesis chapter 24, and this is when he's trying to find a, a, a a wife for his son Isaac. Uh, Genesis 24, and Lori, read verse 31. And he said, Come in, come in, lust of the Lord. Why do you stand outside since I have prepared the house and a place for the camels? And in that verse 31, he said, Come in. Blessed of Jehovah. He uses the name of Israel's God. And so what people are, it seems to be, is that um, Laban, Nahor, Bethuel, they all knew about Jehovah. And the reason is, turn over to Genesis 11. I know we're going backwards here, but... We're just about done. Genesis chapter 11. <laughs> oh, man. And I would say uh, Pauline, but she'd say dwarf. <laughs> so... My good friend Ken, would you read, um, beginning in verse 10, um, down through uh, 26? Are you kidding me? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll give it a shot. <laughs> this is the account of Shem. Two years after the flood, when Shem was 100 years old, he became the father of Arafat, 
And after he became the father of Arphax, Shem lived 500 years and had other sons and daughters. When Arphax had lived 35 years, he became the father of Shelah. And after he became the father of Shelah, Arphax had lived 403 years and had other sons and daughters. When Shelah had lived 30 years, he became the father of Eber. And after he became the father of Eber, Shelah lived 403 years and had other sons and daughters. When Eber had lived 34 years, he became the father of Peleg. And after he became the father of Peleg, Eber lived 430 years and had other sons and daughters. When Peleg had lived 30 years, he became the father of Ru. And after he became the father of Ru, Peleg lived 209 years and had other sons and daughters. When Ru had lived 32 years, he became the father of Siru, and after he became the father of Siru, Ru lived 207 years and had other sons and daughters. When, when Siru had lived 30 years, he became the father of Nahor, and after he became the father of Nahor, Siru lived 200 years and had other sons and daughters. When Nahor had lived 29 years, he became the father of Terah, and after he became the father of Terah, Nahor lived 119 years and had other sons and daughters. After Terah had lived 70 years, he became the father of Abram, Nahor, and Haran. Haran. This is the account of Terah. Yes. Shem, whose father was... Whose father was Shem? Noah. Noah. And Noah knew all about the God, Jehovah. They were on speaking terms. I mean, one day God showed up and he says to Noah, I want you to look at these plans I drew up. He said, this is going to be epic. <laughs> Noah looked at those blueprints and he said, what is it? It's a boat. Noah says, well, what do you do with it? God says, it floats. And it's, it floats in water. How big is it? <laughs> Huge. How am I going to move it? No, I'm bringing the water to you. And once you get the boat built, you're going to have animals in there. Well, what kind of animals? Every animal on the planet. He knew about God. He told his sons, one of them was Shem, and from Shem, all the way down, as Ken read, came Nahor, who was the father of Terah. What a name. <laughs> and Terah was the father of Abram. And so it's very likely that after Abraham's conversion, Nahor was converted, and he raised Bethuel to worship Jehovah, and that's why Rebekah says, send Jacob back to my family, because Jacob and Laban brother and sister. They know about Jehovah. This living in Canaan where Esau is getting his wives, that is a recipe for disaster because there's no fear of God here. And Isaac says, you're absolutely right. Take off. I'm going to give you my blessing and nothing else. <laughs> so that's it. We're done.